Welcome back to Year of Goldberg. Today I'll be talking about my experience in Ciudad de Mexico or Mexico City. This is my second time being in Central America, but previously it was El Salvador, so I'll use it as a compare contrast where relevant. So getting there, flew with Area Mexico, which is a surprisingly good airline despite being on the cheaper side. The only thing they did that was a little bit upsetting they wouldn't let you check in initially online. They said, go to the Delta desk. You go to Delta, they send you, there's actually Air Mexico. And then they insisted on weighing my carry-on and the personal item. And they said, oh, it's too much, but we'll give you a free pass. Though on the way back, they didn't mess with that because I checked in through the app. So uh, just something to be aware of. I don't know how some of these people get away with their carry-ons because they'll have these huge ass duffel bags. And I suppose no one really is the wiser. That being said, the service is pretty solid. The food is actually not bad at all. And what happens, they give you your meal, a drink with it, and then they offer you coffee afterwards, which not all airlines do that. So I did appreciate it, especially when I was on the way down because I managed during my vacation, yeah, nerd moment, I managed to read three books on my iPad while I was there, either flying or in cafes, that kind of thing. So it's helping with the research. Once you get into Mexico City Airport, you try to get picked up. And I called an Uber and he was messaging me, look, we're not allowed to actually get close and pick you up. You have to walk out to the end of the road because I guess either the government or the taxi cab unions, medallion services don't permit them to, which I don't know exactly how they get away with it. If you use yellow cab to give you a sense of contrast, I do the same in El Salvador. That was mainly because I didn't have phone service when I got there. I had ordered a SIM, didn't arrive. I couldn't use an eSIM, so I had to use them. But in Mexico City, the yellow cab was like 325 from the airport to the hotel. In contrast, when I was leaving to come back, I did get an Uber to drop you off, which I suppose is more acceptable under their terms. It was 183 pesos plus 40 tip. So definitely you're getting grifted from the taxi companies if you choose to engage with them. Uh, my hotel wasn't bad. It was kind of budget, but fairly comfortable. If I go back, I'm going to get one closer to the, if you want to call that the bar strip, because I was a slight bit of a walk, but still a solid location. I will say paper thin walls. And that became quite evident on the last night, just after 10 o'clock coming back to my room, I'm trying to shuffle to get my a card for the door and some girl across the hall was getting it very loud latina so you can imagine but now let's proceed with impressions of the city itself yeah i know very fascinating ms2 behold mexico city is certainly one of the less attractive urban landscapes i've seen many of the buildings are outdated they're falling apart and even though there appears to be a burgeoning public sector it's either lacking in funding or just very inefficient and uh, not responsive. To give you an example of this, you have lots of police, SSC police, auxiliary, transit, and I wanna say maybe in the museums, I don't know if they always have firearms though, those varieties, there were a lot of women working those jobs. Then you have maybe Guardia Nacional or Guardia Civil that are around the government buildings. They do have cool hats, kind of like the cops in Massachusetts State Police detachments, and they carry these miniature M4s. I've never seen those before. But as much as there's those cops, when you compare to San Salvador, the police there look like they would beat the crap out of you at any moment. These Mexican cops seem more chill, yeah, normies collecting a paycheck, playing on their phone, although perhaps they have less crime overall. And many maintenance workers, many sanitation workers with the big brush brooms, Yet a lot of stuff is just in decay, which is odd because remember, this is the former kingdom of AMLO, the outgoing president. And of course, uh, more recently, it was my big mommy, Claudia. And I don't know if they're just bad administrators or there's corruption there. Uh, for instance, you walk down just a regular sidewalk and you got those metal plates that cover for access and there's a big jagged hole in a circle cut with edges, you put your foot through that, you're gonna probably uh, you have to get like a tetanus shot, if not worse, it's gonna slice your tendon. Or you'd have a little square uncovered with rebar sticking up. 
So if you're walking at night in Mexico City, be very careful, even in the tourist areas, because you could jack up your leg, your foot, something else, if you're not paying attention. And then in the parks, you'll have, okay, we've got slabs of concrete, all, everything good. Then all of a sudden, I don't know if it's sunk or it was broken apart. It's just a mud bath and you got to walk on the edge or you're going to ruin your shoes, your pants. So you would think this is stuff they would section off they would be trying to work on because it's where a lot of you know, people come with the money foreigners but it's like no one really cares or they don't they can't afford to on a related note trash is everywhere in fact you'll see corners of sidewalks is like a mound everyone's little you know altar put your trash there your soda cans your whatnot i'm not sure if this is a cultural thing or perhaps they don't know how to dispose of it because i have heard with some poor countries like in asia they buy this trash or recycling and they can't do anything. So it's just ends up in like a landfill or these floating islands of sorts. In the case of Mexico, I got out of, it was the, one of the museums and had one of those elote corns from the stand, pretty nasty. But I was like, I want to be a good person. I don't want to chuck this just into the park like a lot of people do. So I start walking and I couldn't find a trash can. This is in a touristy area, no trash cans probably a half a mile out of my way, still could not find one. And I go up to this other food stand and the lady, I was like, perdón, you know, tienes basura. She's like, yeah, which they don't even have their own trash cans, just these like plastic buckets you would get at Lowe's. And I offered to pay her because I kind of felt bad in using your trash, not buying anything. But she's like, yeah, don't worry about it. So I don't know. And then when I did the tour in the hot air balloon, you could see these houses outside the city, just the regular style, the block Spanish house with, it's not the classic shingles you know they have those little humps all together it's in that design but it's just one sheet of metal and you'll have their yard closed in with walls but in the corner of the yard you'll have tires all the mounds of trash so i think it's either it's a problem with the mexico city area or maybe it's the whole country that they don't really have a way of disposing of this stuff on a regular basis which is unfortunate because it would look far nicer as a city if it was maintained and the trash was gone the only evidence i saw of kind of a swift reaction some vandals came through the business district and smashed up windows and the next day you had the glassmith out there measuring things trying to get it done so if anyone is from mexico and has more insight please let me know in the comments because i'd be interested as far as what I did there, so this was something of a last minute trip. I didn't plan it as well as I could have. But when I am on vacation, I'm not just chilling. I'm always on the move, walking, doing something because I don't get to take vacations all the time. So the first day I chose to do the Grutas Tolentango. Now, if you're going to attempt it, get the express tour that lives in the morning because Otherwise, you're going to be there when more people show up, the locals, it's busy, it's not as fun. And then your entire day will be shot because it's a solid like 12, 13 hours to do this circuit. But they get you and I think the it's two and a half to three hours to actually get there. I should note Mexico City roads, both within and even outside, are kind of rough, pretty bumpy. So I had never gotten motion sickness since I was a child and I actually did uh, attain some. Luckily, I had the motion sickness pills, but I started running out towards the end of the like the, the return trip because I was already low. If you don't bring them with you, you can get at the pharmacy. I think it's called Dramamine or Dramamina, and that'll help you because it's not pleasant to be you know, in that situation. But you can see here, built into the side of the mountain, you've got these pools. Some of them are warmer, some cooler. Nice uh, visuals if you want to take pictures. And after that, they take you to lunch. I think I skipped that or breakfast. I skipped it because I didn't bring a lot of, they want either USD or pesos cash. They don't take debit cards, credit cards. After that, we went to, it's like this small tunnel with a really strong current of warm water. And there was a couple of older Asian ladies in my party. So I had to help them because they were actually going to be bowled over and no joke. It was a pretty intense flow. Then there's a bigger cave where you have to have something similar going on and finally the river so it was enjoyable i probably wouldn't do it again unless i had someone that really wanted to go but that's something if you're interested the next day i did one of the hot air balloon tours and i thought this had real value for money so once again starts early they take you out to the tourism office do the whole safety brief you get in the air it's only 40 45 minutes really nice visuals you get to see the pyramids other balloons all the animals below cars 
This has come as highly recommended. Then they take you to a kind of buffet-style breakfast, which was decent food, I gotta admit. There's a little bit of cultural entertainment, like a dance, and then they bring you to, you have like a tasting of different like mezcal, other drinks. They show you stuff about what the symbolism is to specific carvings, the traditional gods. And those staffers were cool. They talk about the agave plant. That was all a great experience. Uh, do be prepared. There are going to be a lot of people hassling you to sell trinkets. So if you don't like that, the only thing I wanted to get was one of those, and they're probably not real, but the Obsidian Aztec War Clubs. At the same time, I didn't intend to check a bag returning home, so I chose to not do that. Maybe next time I'll, I'll pick it up. Oh, and then I should say, before it was over, they do bring you to the pyramids. And we had a cool tour guide, he'll show you, talk about the history. Uh, that guy was hilarious because he wasn't a big fan of Catholicism, you could tell. Uh, so we had some interesting discussions there. Now, they'll let you take pictures down below, but you can't climb up anymore because a uh, classic problem. People, I guess, instead of just walking up to the top, they started scaling the sides, trying to mess with the rocks. And this is just the reason why a lot of individuals don't deserve human rights. So earlier this year, I was up northeast, and it's a nice part of New York, not the AOC zone. And this guy, he got the blueprints to the original Star Trek set, and he built it pretty much with perfect accuracy. So you can take a tour, it's not too expensive. I was like, this is awesome. So you have the lady come in or Star Trek uniform. She says, hey, please take as many pictures as you want. Just don't touch anything. All right, we walk in. It's not the first or second room. This boomer couple starts messing with one of the little consoles and breaks something. It's like, how hard is it for you to follow basic instructions at that age? And then the same people, at the end, you have the captain's chair. So everyone wants to take a picture. I asked this guy if he could do mine. He's like, yeah, no problem. And the same couple is standing behind me in the frame with a deer in the headlights, like, what's going on? It's like, these are the same people, mind you, that when they were trying to take pictures, they're yelling at people, don't be in the frame. Like, this is why I'm saying there's just such a problem of lack of courtesy, lack of respect, and it's across different, you know, nationalities, ethnic groups, religions. I don't know. What can we do? As far as other spots you can visit, I didn't get to go to the Palace of Arts because I believe it was shut to the public at that time. You have the Kahlo Museum, which you have to have reservations in advance, so I didn't make that. Although you can do a digital tour of her house if you're interested. And then there's a military museum outside of the city, which I want to say is an hour plus. So that has to be planned. You got the Samaya Gallery. That was on the list and just didn't happen because of logistics. And then I was going to go to a Libre fight, but it was also sold out. So that was really just a you know failure in planning. But what I did see, the Diego Rivera Mural Museum, in my opinion, it's a waste of time. It's hard to find the entrance because you have all these pop-up shops in the way. The staff is kind of rude, and it's basically one room. So you can see the whole thing on Google if you want. Then I went to the... Museum of Modern Art, which was actually pretty cool. You hear Modern Art, oh, it's going to be a waste of time. It was, I think it was worthwhile. The castle is one of the best things they've got. Nice paintings, historical artifacts. I didn't mess so much with the Natural History Museums. I did go to the Anthropology Museum, which it's impressive. Now, most of the plaques are in Spanish. So unless you read that, you can probably breeze through it. Or you can get the little audio guide, but I don't have patience for that personally. I'm like, I'd rather read a book. Plus, a lot of it was on textiles and pottery. So I was like, eh, you know, if you really want to, perhaps. But overall, yeah, like I said, they've got some nice stuff to see if you're interested in museums. If you're not, you might want to do more of the excursion style stuff or just kind of socialize, which they've got some decent restaurants, honestly. They have these... Uh, coffee shops. Oh, another place. Actually, I forgot to mention, I did go to the Museum of Chocolate, which was pretty cool. And then you taste the cow cow beans. And then I went to a cafe and you can have the legit old fashioned cow cow drink, which is not, you know, inundated with all the added sugar that a lot of American stuff has. Also, they have a special cinnamon coffee. I think it's Cafe de Ola. Very enjoyable as well. So try that out if you have the chance to go. Had a pizza there, which was good. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of tacos, mainly because I have to eat a lot to be full, and I don't think tortillas are very good for you, but if you like that food, it's all over the place. 
Also, they have a lot of hamburger shops, so all you burger cells are going to be taken care of. Now for the more important question, the chicas. So this image is probably overly flattering because the average Mexicana in Mexico City or the surrounding areas is going to be about five foot to five three, short stubby legs that connect to the lower back without a discernible ass. They've got very muscular shoulders, tiny ion cannons that kind of swing low, sweet che riyad, and darker hair, brown eyes, many wear glasses. They'll either have a beak or a somewhat 90 degree angle nose, but fairly prominent, and they range from the indigenous color, more in the middle, or kind of a cream colored white. So there were some better looking mestizos, I'd say, that worked at the tourism office when we did the balloon flight. By and large, they're not stunning. And I have to say this, I know guys go around, oh, oofy doofy is law. I'm just being honest. In the last 15 months, I visited six or seven American cities, most of them large, some medium sized. I visited four countries. I think it's foofy doofy is law i.e. women that are like a one, two, or three out of ten, kind of brutal looking, securing their looks match, or a guy who's substantially better than them. And I'm being kind of generous here, because the truth is, mestizos in particular are, they are absolutely just sorceresses. They're masters at using fake up. As I've said, you ask them out from a dating app, they always show up darker than their pictures. And they can use it. You'll be like from a distance, oh yeah, that's the oofy doofy couple. You come up close, oh, hold on. She's got two layers of makeup that change her skin tone. She's made her beak look a lot smaller. Her eyes look different. Uh, they also wear clothes strategically to cover the fupa. Uh, one that was really interesting, part of my, uh, one of the tours, there were these four middle-aged chicks. I think they were Dominicanas, so although they didn't look like sisters at all, more like traditional Latinas. And the one, the best looking, she was probably late 30s, if I were to estimate, fairly pretty face. But um, she's wearing these kind of loose fitting pants that are two face style. So each leg has a different color. And let's be honest, let's be fair, her ass was popping. Now, when she goes to her bikini, you're like, holy shoot, because I kid you not, if you've ever been to one of those like Turkish or Greek Sometimes you might see like a Middle Eastern sandwich shop and they've got that huge, somewhat cylindrical or cone-like slab of meat that's on the skewer spinning. And they just slice strips off. That's how her legs looked. And she was a short girl too. So it's like, boom, boom, boom. I was like, wow. So you might think, oh, that's a oofy doofy couple. You get it closer. And she's actually, without the makeup, without you know all those strategic clothes on, she's actually you know arguably inferior. During the time I was there, maybe saw two or three that you could genuinely say, okay, that's an oofy doofy, that's a guy cutting above his weight. And even there, you have to remember, in these Spanish countries, if you think that our gap between the rich and poor in the U.S., our social mobility is bad, it's even worse in these nations. So if that guy, and we don't know, but if that guy, if his comes from a rich family, if he can give her a lifestyle that's more like an uh, average American, that will be something she might look towards because I've met girls from that part of the world. They've never traveled outside of their country. They don't have AC in their house. They may not even have a car. So there's going to be a, a lot of appeal to that lifestyle. In fact, it was really interesting. The last night I'm there, went to this uh, restaurant and at the adjoining table, you had a Mexican dude talking to this American passport bro, but he wasn't a brother. He was pretty pale. And he is talking about how in the U.S., you know, it's expensive to take girls out and you, you drop all this money, then they ghost you. Whereas here is like, oh, I'm getting these younger chicks. They all want to get with me. I would say he was at least 35, if not closer to 40. But he said, I've noticed if I offer them, hey, let's go to the local taco place or something. They're not interested. You got to take them to the high end spot. Of course, you can do that for a fraction of what you're going to pay in the U.S. And the difference is she's probably going to reciprocate by the end of the night, if you know what I mean. But that's what Mexican dude was saying. Yeah, if they're going to date a foreigner, they want to get their money's worth. Otherwise, they'll be with a local guy, less of a, a language barrier, the like, less chance that he just disappears. And so, yeah, if you can provide that lifestyle as a local guy, if you've got money, you're going to probably have a better looking chick. But by and large, that's not common. And this comes to the point. You know, I'm seeing it more and more. We're idiocracy. The, the people that are kind of brutal are reproducing in large numbers. 
the people that, at least in theory, as I said in the WOC video, the women that you might argue have better genetics, better figures, taller, they're either not reproducing or they're doing it at a lower rate. So who's going to inherit the earth, okay? This has been the saga of human civilizations. It's not Roman values, Greek values, Christian values, Muslim values. Your genetic stock is going to make or break your destiny. And in the case of the United States, I would say like Mexico, we're on a rapid downward spiral. But that's a topic for maybe another day. Let's get back to the discussion of the video itself. As far as my personal experience with the Chicas goes, and of course someone will say, Ah, oh, you haven't done this, you're just in your mom's basement all the time. Well, this is actually a second level office in a house that I own. Sorry, I rent from the bank, I have to make all the improvements, and I'll pay it off, I'll own it. No, actually I'll have to pay the government property tax. But I just describe stuff, it's not me humble bragging. I just want to give people context because a lot of folks on the internet, they actually don't do anything. They just respond to headlines or whatnot. So. I'm over six feet. I'm walking down the street. Most Mexican guys are pretty short. Now there are exceptions. Some of the Spaniard dudes are pretty tall. And then there's the occasional mestizo as well that is up there. I should quickly note the Criollos. I saw a couple of the girls. They were on the taller side, well-dressed in the business district. But as far as the official figures went, I didn't see a whole lot. So I'm wondering if they're in a separate neighborhood than a lot of this, uh, you know, the, the touristy stuff or the locals. That being noted, you're going down, minding your own business, pretty obvious IOIs from some of these better looking mestizas, some of them young, some of them middle aged. I was in a coffee shop, talked to the barista a little bit about her hair, because she had that kind of Star Wars, you know, female hair, the two buns in the back. And she was beaming like ear to ear, just being you know, interacted with. Now, who knows, maybe she wanted tips. So I would say that those glances either indicated interest or I look like a freak. You can choose probably the latter. There was also, when I was leaving from the airport, I didn't have a gate yet for my flight, so I sat in this one going to Chile, and you had, at first I saw a couple walking, and she looked really good in her jeans, I gotta say, but she looked basically Caucasian, but she was Chilean. That was probably one of the best girls I saw this entire trip, uh, you know, with maybe one exception. And then there was another chick with her somewhat elderly parents, she was on the Indian side, but much better build, taller, nice eye on cannons. She kept looking at me. So again, I'm either, you know, a great specimen or I'm a freak. You can make your decision. I didn't go on this journey, like planning to Geomax. I said, hey, if it happens, it happens. And like I said, what occurred, I had those two days when I did the activities. Then the next day I was going to go out more, but I had a really bad migraine and hadn't brought my prescription pills. So I was not feeling the best. What I've noticed though, and I kind of learned this in part with El Salvador, if you use Bumble, what I've got to do in future is buy the travel mode and be there at least two weeks, three weeks in advance so you can start being sorted in the algorithm because usually what happens about a day into the trip, you'll match with a nice one, not just an okay, it'll be one you, you do like, but the problem is they've got to schedule their job, they've already something planned on the weekend, so they're, well, I'm available this day, well, unfortunately, that's when your flight is, so I need to plan better because that was the case in El Salvador, one of the best looking, you know, she was early 30s, but flat stomach, big ion cannons, fat ass, pretty face, no beak, full lips. It was the same issue, right? If, you, if you're not working to an extent with their schedule, unless they're, you know, pay for play, which I haven't messed with that thus far, it's going to be a question. Then, of course, if you do go out to bars and you just socialize, some guy was saying in Costa Rica, they just approach you. I didn't see that in Mexico City, but I didn't really do the nightlife because like I said, I was busy with other stuff or not feeling well. But, um, you know, they're not bad. They're not the best I've seen. I would like to compare with some other parts of the region. I would say as of what I came across, El Salvadorian women are slightly better than Mexican. But then again, might be another part of the country, Mexico, which is large has a better quality, who knows. With that being said, plans for future travels. Veracruz is appealing from a historical standpoint, seems to be a center of that apparently African early civilization they, they believe came over to Mexico, if that's correct. I know QB Willie swears by Guadalajara and then Playa del Carmen. Now I wonder if Playa del Carmen being slightly closer to Cancun, if the women are more hypergamous because of the tourism money, but I would still like to check it out. I would go back to CDMX, but like I said, I would get a hotel probably in a different area just to be a little bit more convenient to some of the bars and whatnot. 
Guatemala, I was going to go last year. At this point, I don't know if I will. I've heard Guatemala City is kind of ratchet. Now, there is the other spot that's more touristy. The name escapes me right now. And you can visit Tikal, although having been to the, uh, the Mexican pyramids, having done that, I don't know if Tikal is really worth it. Maybe so. You can also go to Tikal from Belize, another place I was planning to visit. So I might do that, although you have to stay at a particular resort to be have access over the road. Alternatively, you can just go to San Pedro. I might do that, just have a good time. I do, however, want to see from the air that uh, big blue hole. No, no, not a euphemism for an SJW, but it's like off the coast. Uh, so you got El Salvador. I would return there. I actually enjoyed you know, the people and the country. There were some other things that I'd like to do. Like there was a tour that I think takes you to the actual guerrilla base and you get to see the history from their point of view. Honduras, I've met a couple of Honduran women that were pretty hot in the US, but it is a more lengthy flight, if I remember correctly. Nicaragua, I'm not going to mess with that with the current government. Costa Rica, yeah, uh, definitely heard good things about it. Panama as well. And there you go, everyone's favorite, Colombia. I would like to go to Uruguay. Now, the flights are not easy. They're, they're a little bit longer. It's easier to get to Asuncion, Asuncion, probably mispronouncing that, in Paraguay. And then, of course, Brazil. But the part of Brazil I want to go to is really inconvenient to get to, even by plane. You have to go to, I think, Sao Paulo first and then take another connection. So we'll see how that plays out. I've got some other plans, too, for you know maybe Europe. And whatnot but uh, if you have any suggestions about central america south america please drop them below and uh, let me know what your experience was